Hey guys, Yulia here. So today I wanted to show you some plants that I bought while we were away last week. Um, and I'm not sure if you saw in my stories on Instagram and Facebook, while we were away, there was a huge storm that hit New Jersey. And um, a lot of trees were down, people were without power. We actually had no power for four days and we came back to a very terrible situation with our fridge. But um, a friend of mine actually FaceTimed me from the garden because I asked her to show me the damage. And there was a lot of damage. Uh, most of our dahlias are gone for the season. And I was uh, pretty upset. And what an upset gardener does when there's something wrong with the garden, she buys more plants. And thankfully, there was an amazing nursery uh, nearby where we stayed in Cape Cod. It's called Bayberry Nursery, and they have amazing selection of plants. And I would say all of these plants are pretty rare. Um, they are either can be found in catalogs or ordered as specialty items. And I have seen these plants many times in other people's gardens on Instagram or in garden magazines but I really saw them sold in the nursery. So when I saw these, I needed to have them. Meanwhile, our car was like packed with our baggage. Uh, we have a large dog in the back seat and I jammed all of these plants <laughs> in the car. I did not care, I had to have them. Anyway, I'm just going to jump right into the first plant. Sorry you guys, I had to move my operation because our neighbor's kids started to play and they got a little loud but I want them to have fun, but I also want you to hear me. <laughs> anyway, the first plant that I have here is this lilac squirrel or sanguis sorba. And it is a beautiful perennial. Um, this is pretty much the size it gets at about one foot to a foot and a half tall. But with the plumes of flowers, it's about four feet tall. And it has these most beautiful lilac pink like flowers. They're super soft so soft you guys uh, but they also have amazingly decorative foliage as well they're almost like this powdery blue um, color and almost look like acacia leaves to me definitely a great plant for a middle of the border um, it is hardy from zone four to eight and it does say on the label that they prefer part sun to sunny locations, but from everything I read online, they prefer a little bit more sun than shade. And um, I don't think I've ever talked about uh, what sun, part sun, part shade, and shade means. Basically sun uh, or when a perennial requires sunny location, there's anything uh, more than six hours of sunlight and the more the better and a part sun is from um, about four to six hours of sunlight and part shade to shade is a less than four hours of sunlight so definitely observe your space in your garden where you want to plant your perennials because sun requirement is probably one of the most important ones for your plants when you plant them but going back to this plant absolutely adorable i love the graceful um, pendulous shape of it um, I will be putting this in the border because I think the colors just go with my purple pink and white scheme all right so the next plant I have here is this Clarodendrum trichotomum and before I go um, into detail about uh, this plant I just wanted to talk about my use of Latin names of plants I personally love using Latin names because, as you guys know, I'm not from the United States. And when I came here, um, knowing Latin names for plants was incredibly helpful because it's sort of a unifier and Latin names are the same all around the world. I mean, they're changing some of the Latin names now because they're doing DNA on plants. But most of the time it is exactly the same name whether you live in France, United States or New Zealand. Meanwhile, common names can be quite confusing for plants. Now, if you have any trouble pronouncing Latin names of plants, 
I highly recommend that you go to Missouri Botanical Garden website. They have a huge plant library and it's not only helpful with finding the right plant for your garden, uh, their sizes, the culture, whether they need uh, sun or shade, but there is also uh, a button that is right next to the name of the plant. And once you press that button, nice gentleman's voice will tell you how to pronounce the name of the plant, which was like mind blowing for me. <laughs> so I use that website all the time. Um, it is very helpful. I use Latin names all the time um, because it is just this international language of plants. Anyway, now about this lovely plant, I cannot tell you how overly excited I was when I found this plant in a nursery because um, I had a clerodendron um, as a house plant when I uh, lived back in Russia and it was a gorgeous plant. Um, it was a tropical plant. It was a beautiful house plant. And then a couple of years ago, uh, Michael and I went to Stone Crop Gardens in Cold Springs, New York and I saw a clerodendron growing outside on this beautiful pergola, and it was this clerodendron right here. Now, this clerodendron is a vine, um, and it grows uh, to about 10 to 15 feet tall, has gorgeous flowers that are fragrant, and then, uh, like you can see these white flowers right here, when they're done blooming and they fall off, the calyx, that is the burgundy part of the flower, stays so it is incredibly decorative for entire season um, so there's another really really cool thing about this plant and I did some research before talking about it with you and in one of the websites it said if you crush the leaves a little bit they smell like peanut butter and I was like no way they no no way and they do guys this plant if you just crush it a little bit, they smell like peanut butter, which is so cool. Um, anyway, super excited that I found this plant. I will be planting it on the, our arbor, which is right behind me because um, it needs a support. It is a vine slash shrub, so it needs a little bit of support. Now, here is one thing. Um, all of the websites that I read about this plant said that it's hardy to zone seven, which I am in zone six. So it is not technically hardy to my area, but that garden where I was in Cold Springs, New York is considered zone six, just like my zone right here. And it was doing just fine. I'm not sure if they had a uh, microclimate of some sort. Um, so I am hoping to protect this plant a little bit this winter and see how it does. And then, um, you know, I decide what to do with it, maybe to replant it um, in a warmer part of my garden. All of our gardens have microclimates. You know, part of your uh, garden that holds cold air or maybe a little bit more tropical. So I will definitely look out for that. But super cool plant so excited to have this in my garden and um, smell those peanut butter leaves. All right, so the next plant you are probably familiar with, this is Sun King Aurelia. And I have seen this plant before. I actually have planted it before in one of my client's gardens and it does really well in our area. And um, it is hardy from zone four to eight. It grows to about four to five feet tall and it likes part shade to shady areas, which I have a lot in the garden. And I cannot believe it took me so long to finally plant this plant. Well, first of all, I couldn't find it for a long time. Um, but this is actually an edible plant in Japan and the new shoots taste like asparagus from what I heard. But um, what I love about this plant is obviously the foliage, that really bright golden yellow foliage that will stand out in the garden. Now you have to be careful when you plant plants like this. You cannot overdo it 
because from my experience, if everything is unique in the garden, nothing is. And I have seen those gardens with a lot of variegated plants, a lot of purple leaf plants or yellow leaf plants like that. And it becomes overwhelming. There's just too many colors, too much excitement. Um, I like more of a subtle garden with some focal points like this. Then it really works. When you enter the garden, you see that plant and it doesn't get lost in a lot of other colors. So I am actually going to plant this in the woodland garden where I think it's going to do really well. I know that it likes moist soil though, so I definitely will give it a little extra water during its establishment. This little plant is called Nautia Macedonica, and I believe it used to be Scabiosa, but they changed the name. Um, but I can see the little pincushion flowers on it that look uh, exactly like Scabiosa. These are burgundy to um, like a magenta color. Now they do stay about this size, about eight inches to a foot tall. This plant I bought for the devil strip because the devil strip um, is not irrigated. It has very dry conditions and this is what this plant likes. And also this plant actually blooms for a very long time for a perennial. As you know, perennials bloom um, about a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks, and then you can deadhead them and they may or may not bloom again. But this plant actually blooms for a couple of months, which is amazing. Um, also, I just love the height of it. And if I have like a carpet of these beautiful flowers for a couple of months, that is a pretty cool. Now, there's one thing about this plant, although it is hardy to zone nine, from everything I read, it is not tolerant of hot and humid conditions of the south. Now, New Jersey can get pretty hot and humid days. We can get 95 degrees and 90% humidity, which is oppressive, but we have few days like that. And I'm sure South Carolina or Georgia can get a lot <laughs> of days like that. And I would not recommend planting this plant down there. Anyway, love this little plant. It had a lot more flowers when I bought it last week. Um, and I just really, really need to get it in the ground. Now this last plant that I have here, you guys would not believe what this is. I actually have two varieties of this plant already in my garden. And when I saw a variegated variety, I had to have it. This is Joe Pye Weed. Um, this is Eupatorium Fortunii Pink Frost. And I have a regular Joe Pye Weed that is uh, really tall, about six to seven feet tall, blooming right now. And I have a baby Joe in my garden. And this is a great addition to my Joe Pye Weed collection. It has beautiful light green foliage with a creamy outline. It does bloom with a regular Joe Pye weed purple flowers. Um, grows to about three to four feet tall. And that was another reason why I bought this plant because I'm going to put this in the border because I have a feeling that my border is missing that um, medium, medium level height of plants. I have really, really tall plants and short plants, but I'm missing that uh, medium level. And um, this is definitely going to help with that. Also, the special foliage of this plant is just spectacular and uh, is going to be that uh, focal point in my border. Now, um, about all of these plants, I am so thrilled with them, but I only bought one of each. And there is a reason for that. Um, you know, I usually buy three to five to have a really nice block of color in the garden, um, but I have very little experience with any of these plants. You know, either read about them or saw them in the garden or planted them in my client's garden, but I've never grown them myself. And I would hate to buy five or 10 of each plant and have them all die because they just 
don't like my garden or they require high maintenance. So I will uh, take care of these plants for a couple of years, see how they do in my garden and maybe get more. Um, anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this plant haul video and um, learn something new. <laughs> I can talk about plants all day long. I'm a huge plant hunter. Um, I love unusual plants. Um, so definitely let me know if you want more videos like this. If you are new here, consider subscribing. I would love to stay in touch with you. And I hope you are safe. I hope you are gardening. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks.